Sometimes I get asked about pots and pans and gadgets and things in the kitchen. And I want to take this time to show you some of the useful tools that I find most helpful. And there are some things that it's very important to use the right one. So I want to start out with pots and pans. I use these just about every day, several times a day. Um, one important thing about pans is to get stainless steel. Aluminum, my uncle told me this years ago, that uh, people that suffer Alzheimer's, they have a high amount of aluminum in the brain. There are several ways it can, can they're not, as far as I know, they're not too sure how it gets into the brain. There's several possibilities. One of them is deodorants or antiperspirants that have aluminum in them. Uh, you don't want to use those. And another way that they it can get into the body is through cookware. And he always recommended that we use stainless steel. So I, when I found that out, I threw out all the aluminum pans that I had. Uh, my grandmother suffered with Alzheimer's and I know from my grandfather's experience taking care of her that that is really not something you want to risk. So, and also my uncle told me that it, um, I, I had a big cast iron skillet and I, I thought I was doing myself a favor by using it because you don't use, you know, once you get it seasoned you're not going to be using as much fat. But the truth of the matter is that those pores, iron is actually uh, very porous and it will pull that fat in and that fat that is on the pan, and of course, you know, that is thought of as an advantage, but actually that fat that gets into the pores of the iron pan um, becomes more and more oxidized and it doesn't get cleaned off. You know, you don't clean it off like you would a, a stainless steel. It stays in the pan and it becomes worse and worse and more and more toxic and over time uh, it's eventually absorbed and of course you add a little more and, and that gets oxidized and all of that oxidization of oil becomes uh, carcinogenic. It becomes a free radical. So uh, when I found this out I threw out all my cast iron skillet and I don't miss it because I've learned to cook more healthfully and free from any oils. And some people, you know, they'll be watching a video, they'll say, well, if you put a little oil on that, that'll help. But I put good health at a higher priority than convenience. And in actuality, what I have learned over the years is that the, the advantage is so minuscule and it doesn't really help clean, and clean a pan. I take a lot less time to clean a pan than I ever did when I was using fats on them. Another thing that I like to use is one of these. This is a little steamer basket. You just put a little water, be sure and put water in the bottom of the pan. Put that in there and then you put your vegetables right in that and put the lid on top. And that keeps it cooks the vegetables without the vitamins being leached into your into the water and it also keeps it from you having to use something like fat this is by presto and i've been really enjoying this pan i've had this for a couple of years now and they have several sizes. This is stainless steel and I would strongly recommend that if you buy one to get the largest that you can afford to buy. This is a smaller one and when you cook you're not going to be filling it all the way to the top. It'll actually only be filling it about halfway. So if you buy a larger one you're going to be able to cook a lot more. 
larger quantities than this. Um, the gasket you'll need to change about once a year or thereabout. Um, that and the little button. This is the pressure release button. I used to have aluminum uh, cookie sheets. I got rid of them and I replaced them with these nice stainless steel ones. These are nice heavy duty. They don't warp. They keep their shape very nicely. I prefer to use these over a non-stick coated uh, cookie sheet. I own a non-stick cookie sheet, but I never use it. It It is made of aluminum, and I don't know if the aluminum could go through there, but even if, I, if, if it were made of stainless steel, I still have no way of knowing whether or not that non-stick coating um, affects the human body. And I also get stainless steel bread pans and brownie pans and then the big casseroles. These serve very well. They're more durable than glass. I have some glass ones, but these you don't have to worry about the heat te temperature change causing them to break. Then I have these. These are cookie cooling racks. I use them more for bread than I do cookies. And I, these are a real nice kind. I, I've had these for a long time and I have six of them and you can stack them quite high You know, if you're doing something flat. It doesn't work with large loaves of bread but it does with the uh, buns and um, flat breads and stuff like that. And this, I recently got this at the Asian market. It is stainless steel um, mesh and it has a uh, nice heavy duty frame that helps keep its shape. I bought two of these and I use these now instead of the cookie cool, cooling racks for covering my uh, tortillas when I'm drying them for making chips. If you hunt around you can find some of these nifty little pans here. This is both a, a nice saucepan this is stainless steel and it also has this nice little basket for steaming vegetables. I have found that to be very useful. It has a vented glass lid that lets the steam out and that is really nice. I also have several pans. This is part of my Revere Wear set. I have two different sizes of skillets and while I don't fry I do like to use this for um, some of my rice recipes and lentil recipes and doing other things. And you can use water instead of oil to saute if you want to do some sauteing. But a frying pan doesn't have to be used with oil and these are really nice. I also have a few pieces of enamelware. I like this one. This is a really nice size. And these are great for putting out in the solar oven. I fill it full of beans that have been soaking. And I can put it out in the sunshine and in the solar oven. And it does a great job. It also, you can do rice. You can do all kinds of things. These are really handy. These are so handy. They have the basket, this part here that is solid. And then it has a basket that fits right into it and a lid. And these are great for if you have a, a bunch of vegetables or fruit that you want to wash. You just put them all in there and you fill it until the water is completely covering them. You can wash them really good and then drain it, drain, wash out, you know, throw the water away and then let it sit and drain some more. And if you want, this will keep the refrigerator from drying your vegetables out. You can keep them right in there. That's 
one really handy thing. They have several different sizes. This is a nice little size. I like to put, you know, four or five pieces of fruit in there, wash them, get them ready for breakfast. Another thing that we have found at the Asian market is this. This is a little slicer for your vegetables. And it has a removable blade. There's several there are several different sizes. There's this large one and then this really fine one. Almost looks like the blades on a hair clippers. Or if you want to you can just leave those off and you can slice just slices. And there's a little knob on the back here. You can adjust how thick or how thin you make it. And when you get down to the point where you're really close to the blade, you want to be sure and use this. I haven't found this to be useful for doing things like tomatoes, but it works great on cucumbers and squash and radishes and all those kind of salad type vegetables. There are other things that are useful for straining and washing vegetables. These are handy. I, I use these quite often for washing my beans before I start soaking them or draining spaghetti, things like, things like that. When preparing lunches, if I'm going to be using a thermos, I like to have one of these canning funnels. You can get these in the canning department of a hardware store or Walmart or any of those kind of places and it helps keep your the lip of your thermos clean. When you work with real food you want to make it fresh. That way it's the most nutritious and most healthful and it tastes the best. And so I keep one of these handy for squeezing for lemon juice and for salad dressing and things like that. And this one's really nice. I don't really find it to be very useful to own one of those electric ones because you really need to use your muscles. I keep a little bunch of little balls that just fit right into that. This is my little Femster slicer and it works on the same basis as that other slicer but it only does slices. It doesn't have any teeth or anything like that for making anything fancy. If you're just learning to bake bread, this is a very helpful tool. This is a guide for you to be able to slice your bread. And if you want to be able to make nice even slices that will fit nicely into your toaster, this is very helpful. And you want a good bread knife to go with it. This particular model is collapsible. And you just push down and twist. And it folds up more compact. This is handy. This is designed for making salsa. That you can use it for all kinds of things. Probably even chopping nuts if you wanted to. It has a removable blade and those are pretty sharp so you want to be careful. And it has a little spot here. It fits right in and slides into place. And then there's a little air hole here where you can add more ingredients and just spin it to operate it. It's a great way to get your exercise without going to the gym. And this is of a similar nature. I think I showed you this in a previous video. This has two different blades. You can flip the lever and it brings those teeth up and it will make shreds or you can slide it down and then it will just make circular slices which are fun. It's great for carrots and cucumbers and beets and things like that. It makes food a lot more appetizing. And we have a set of these. I like making turnovers and things like that. I'll see if I can do a recipe. There's four different sizes in here. This one 
is nice for you can fill it with uh, apple type apples and raisins and some dates and date sugar and these smaller ones you can put vegetables in them make kind of an oriental type meal now I'm going to show you some of my power tools probably the one that I use the most is the Vitamix I've used it for making ice creams, I've used it for making uh, milkshakes. You can find some of our videos. Pudding is one of my favorites, the carob pudding that I like to make. And uh, I even use it for granola. And you might be asking, how do you make granola with a Vitamix? Well, the liquid part of the recipe, I use the Vitamix to, to blend the fruits. And then I stir that into the grains and make my granola. Another useful power tool around here that I like is an air popper. You've probably seen our popcorn video and with one of these air poppers and a little spray bottle with salt water in it you have delicious popcorn without the fats that become fat on the body. My little Cuisinart mini prep is another one of my favorite power tools. These are really powerful and I love to make nut butter with these. It's easy to care for. Easy to keep clean. You can take it all apart and clean it all, run it through the dishwasher. And it's a great little machine. Now you might be thinking this is a microwave, but actually this is just a toaster oven. I had a microwave years ago, and one day I stuck a little cup of water in it, turned the oven on, and it didn't take long before the water exploded. And it got me seriously thinking about the safety of microwaves just in general. I thought something as simple as water should not explode in the thing. And about that same time my uncle had shared with my husband and I an article on microwaves and there are some serious health concerns about them. So we threw it out and we got ourselves a little toaster oven and it works just fine. I don't think life is so urgent that we can't take care of our health by using machines that we know are safe. I remember in that article that there were some serious concerns about people warming babies' bottles in the microwave. Not just the fact that it would be too warm, but that the, the milk was no longer healthy for the baby. And if that was a concern for infants, maybe you and I as adults should be concerned about it too. Another of my most frequently used power tools is my grain mill. The name of this one is called Jupiter. Since this is my first grain mill, power grain mill, I really don't have too much to compare it with. So I can't tell you whether or not there are other grain mills that are better, but this one has served us well. I've had it four or five years now. And one of my most important power tool pieces of equipment is my ear covers. I like to use these when I am using especially the Vitamix, but I use it also for the grain mill. It helps protect my hearing so that I don't have more hearing loss than what I've already suffered. When I was a teenager, I, some friends of mine took us took me target practicing with their guns and by the end of the day I couldn't hear much of anything. My hearing has recovered pretty much but I still have a buzz. I have what they call nerve deafness. So protect your ears. I use this a lot for lunches. This makes a really big lunch for John. It has three nice little tubs, two small ones that are the 
same size. And then it has one that's about twice the size of those. And this is great for doing things like stir fry for a lunch or you can put rice in one and beans in another and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. I preheat the, the compartment before I put the ingredients in the little tubs and it's really handy. Now for some of the simpler tools. A good set of knives is really important. Uh, you want a variety of sizes and shapes and different types of teeth. This is a nice small one. I'd like maybe a little smaller one than this. Uh, that would be useful for cutting the core out of a tomato. Sometimes you need something with a lot of serration like this for slicing celery. It's good to have one of those. We keep a a set of these at the table for, these are, most people would call these steak knives. We call them avocado knives because that's what we use them for. And this is our bread knife. You want to, one thing you really want to look for in a good bread knife is one that is made for bread. It's shaped in such a way that you will get a nice even slice. You want some good serration that will dig into the bread. These we like to use for melons, watermelon and cantaloupe, all the big melons and squash and pumpkins and things like that. You want a good large knife that will go all the way through the, the fruit. <clears throat> this one is really good for cracking coconuts. You've probably seen our coconut video. A good one that has thickness that will stand up to the demands of cutting into a coconut. And this is my favorite for tomatoes. I don't know if you can see that. It has just a little bit of serration. Not really, it's not really going to rip really severely into your tomato, but it will break the skin so that you get a nice slice. This is really good one for tomatoes. This will help reduce the amount of time it takes to prepare an apple for baking. And I like to have several spatulas. This is a little melon baller. I like to have one of these handy when I'm working with melons to make like a fruit salad. I like to have a grater. These are good for carrots and beets and all kinds of little things. Garlic and then a nice whisk. One thing I like about the ones that I get, I like to get some that will lay flat like when you're doing, you're mixing a sauce, you want something that will go on the bottom of your pan and clean off, keep the pan from scorching on the bottom. And then I have a nice, this is a spaghetti fork, works really good for serving spaghetti. And then this is for measuring spaghetti. And then a couple of good rolling pins. This is a good one for pastries. You're going to get a nice, even pastry. And then this one is really nice for rolling out uh, flat breads. And it's curved like this, it, so it helps push the dough out. Then when it comes to storing things like your almond milk, you want some good pitchers. This is a nice one. It has a, a lid. The, one, the older ones used to have a nice rubber lid that would keep all your liquid in there so you could shake it. This one does not, but one thing I do like about this is it has a little, a little spot here where you can keep the lid on and pour the contents as you want and then if you don't want it, the air getting into it, you just turn it. Now some of what I have here is bowls, but this top one is actually a strainer and this is good for when you're making a really big batch of food. I got this at the Asian market and if you were to entertain a large group of people this would be great for draining your spaghetti or washing your vegetables. These are my bread bowls. 
and I have three of them here but there's two different sizes and they're all stainless steel I'm not sure what size that is but that's from elbow to fingertips on me and then this is bigger than that so these are really handy they're great for making large batches of granola or I can make four or five batches of my bread at one time and then I put it in the freezer and save it for another day. That's pretty much it. Um, I have four crock pots but I don't use them because most of our food cooks so fast and I'm too cheap to use electricity. Anyway. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in our next video. Bye.